Hi John, I'm Lucy Gale and I'd like to start by welcoming you back to Australia and thanking you for meeting with Passion Picks at the Talano Hotel here in St Kilda, sunny Melbourne. It's great. <laughs> John, before we get into it, can you explain to our uninitiated viewers what you do and why you do it? Well, I'm a psychic medium. I've been doing that work now. I've been doing this work for about 30 years. Um, I started when I was 15. I'll be 45 this year. And it's been an amazing, amazing journey, and it's my passion. It is a privilege to be able to connect with people, talk about what's happened in their life, what's coming up for them, but also be the conduit and the medium for people who have crossed over. Yes. I heard that you were a skeptic until you had a psychic reading at the age of 15. So what's the story behind that, and how, do you, how did your perception change from that point? Well, I could tell you that I am still a skeptic. <laughs> um, one of the last interviews I just did, the person said to me, I'm a skeptic but ignorant. And I said, good, I'm a skeptic but enlightened. So we should get along well. And the reality is I think everybody should be skeptical. My journey was I did not believe it was possible. So I was skeptical on the borderline of almost you know, cynical. And my mom's family used to have psychics come to the house. And I just said, she's not going to be able to read me. I went for the session. She did a reading. Yep. Changed my life. Told me I had this ability. And that this was something I was supposed to be working with. So... I started studying the subject matter and recognized that I didn't develop my abilities. It was more like I remembered that I had them, I realized that I had them, and I was utilizing them in my everyday life. I just didn't realize what they were. So then I actively decided to work with them. Do you actually see them or do you hear them? Like, what, what's, what do um, you feel? I, I receive my information in three basic ways. I see, hear, and feel energy, which is known as clairvoyance, yes. seeing, clairaudience, hearing, and clairsentience is feeling. And it's like having a daydream. So whatever it is that I'm seeing, hearing, and feeling, I focus on. And then I try to figure out what it means to me in my frame of reference and apply it to the person that I'm sitting with. Okay. I've heard you say that um, psychic ability is normal, indeed, springs from intuition. Why do you feel some people have greater psychic sensitivity and awareness than others? I think it has a lot to do with their, um, just their family. I think that a family can bring it out. Um, if, somebody's got, if somebody has a great musical singing voice, mm -hmm. but they come from a family that's not musical, they might not cater to it. They might not allow that child to go for lessons. They might not teach that. But if that child grows up in a family that's open to music, open to studying, that child's going to have a better opportunity. I was born into a family that was way open to the subject matter. Mm. So my mom's side allowed me to foster this in some way. So I think everybody has the ability to be intuitive and psychic. I don't think everybody has the ability to the point where they should do it for other people. Yeah. But I think everybody has it to the point that they should learn about it for themselves so that they can live a more intuitive life. Great. And, and make empower choices. Ah, because I, I think some people are afraid to actually, if they've got that gift, some people may be afraid to express. Yes. I, I feel some people... Or they know, get spooked out by it. Yeah, they get spooked out by it. Or they get freaked out because they know something's going to happen or that something's going to take place. Yeah, <laughs> true. In history, there are many examples of mediums and clairvoyants. Are there any historical methods you like and why do you think mankind has always been fascinated with psychic energies? I think people are fascinated inherently with the unknown, mm -hmm. and I think it's human nature to question things. I always think it's important to question everything. I question everything. I think it's important. That's how you get your oh, answers. Yeah. So um, I was always the kid asking why. I remember at nine or ten years old, my aunt was in, literally saying, shut up. Why did we ever teach you how to speak? Like, it was like, because I always said question on top of question on top of question. So I think mankind, humanity, is always seeking information, answers, and wanting to learn more. And as a species, we're trying to evolve. Yes. So I think that's the reason why. As far as you know, historic methods and all that kind of stuff. I, I think that we're, we, we, we have evolved in such a way that we're in this technological society where, you know, just a decade ago, there were no iPads. And now people can't live without them. And they're walking around with these tablets and these devices and phones. And so you, you could see in the world that we're living in, information and the accessibility to that information happens on an electronic and technological way every day. Frequency energy. Frequencies and energy. So now just take the device out and recognize that we all have that built-in iPod, mm. iPhone in our head. Mm. Um, and we have our own operating system of intuition. Mm. 
some people recognize it, they tap into it, they tune into it and they use it. Would you recommend people develop their own psychic abilities? And if so, how can they go about it in a positive and healthy way? I think everybody should. I think knowledge is power, you know, it's a basic tenet. You know, the more you learn, the more you can work with, the more you can recognize. Meditation and prayer, probably the most important aspect about it. You have to know how to meditate, quiet your, your mind and relax your physical body. And then for people that are serious about developing it, I think you should find someone that you resonate with that's coming from the right place of integrity and ethics. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always got to be about trying to learn. It's always got to be, you know, when somebody says they want to do readings because they want an occupation change, I, I, that's not somebody I ever want to talk to because that's not my, my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's got to be more about how do you use this information and energy that's accessible to us? It's like the internet. It's there. You can tap into it. You can use it. Well, intuition is like your personal into it. internet. You can tap into it and you can use it. Yeah. And I think meditation and prayer are the two places. And then once you walk through that door, I caution folks all the time and say, you, you, you've made a decision to enter. Mm -hmm. That door is no longer, like you can't, you can't just shut that door and say no. It's like you're now aware. Mm -hmm. And you have to protect yourself energetically. So I use crass examples sometimes because people go like, oh my God, did he just <laughs> say that? And I'm like, yes, he just did because you will never forget it. Yeah. If you were to go into the seediest section of any town yes. and have sex with every male and female in it unprotected, yep. you don't know what you would pick up. It could be very, very detrimental to your physical health. Oh God, yeah. And that's why they talk about, right, yep. protected sex. Yep. Well, energy is sex, and in the world of energy, when you interact with somebody, whether it be a conversation, yep. an argument, yep. as a practitioner, if somebody's a hands-on healer, a hairdresser, a physical therapist, mm -hmm. they're going into a person's energy. You have to protect yourself from that. Correct. And if a person's open, if they're intuitively open, they could take on somebody else's energy and not recognize that. Right. So you have to energetically protect yourself through what's called psychic self-defense. Correct. That's when you get home, you're, it's when somebody can just constantly keep calling you. And yeah, it's like an energy drain. Yeah, it's a, or a yeah. dump. Sometimes people <laughs> like to do an energy dump. When you look at your mobile phone yeah. and you, ha you see that person calling and you have that moment of thinking, yeah. <laughs> do I hit decline? Do I hit accept? You know, you have that thought. There's a reason why you're having that thought. If you're, if you're not like excited to hear from that person at that moment, hit the climb because you, you're feeling something at that moment. Maybe it's, not the right, maybe it's not the right time for you to talk to them because maybe you'll plug into them and do an energy dump on them. Yep. So. Oh, makes sense. In a time when our lives are dominated by advertising and media manipulation, right. how do you combat distrust from skeptics? Okay, so let's take from, the, from skeptics away for a second. Okay. That question is imperative, so important. Yes. One of the things that I teach in classes is that psychic self-defense is so important. And I say, where do you think you're most attacked? Beyond the obvious of your friends and family. Yeah. The media is where you're attacked. Yes. Now, I don't know about here in Australia, but in the States, they actually have pharmaceutical commercials that they, they run on television. I always tell folks, if a pharmaceutical commercial comes on, hit the mute button. Do not listen to it. Because what they're doing is they're telling you that you can have this disease. They're, they're, they're stating you can have this disease and if you have this drug, it's going to combat that. Now, what that does over a period of time is you allow energetically to have that information enter your, your, your field. Mm -hmm. And you now know. So one of the big ones in the States has, um, is a drug for shingles. And wow. it starts off every commercial. If you had chicken pox, you're now capable as an adult to get the shingles virus and blah, 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 blah. And it freaks me out because now people have accepted that as a reality. That is an accepted reality thought. Mm -hmm. People have now been bombarded because they spend billions of dollars making sure that you know this yeah. so that you allow that into your physical body, into your energy. Yeah. Because there's a... So to me, that's one of the main places I say you have to look at what's coming at you yeah. and recognize how, how, no, I'm not allowing that. Mm -hmm. Most people in their lives don't say, I'm not allowing that. Mm -hmm. I live my life this way with my friends, with my family, with everybody. I literally would say, this is, energetically, this is unacceptable yeah. for me. Yeah. I won't allow it in. Yes. And they look at me like I'm harsh. But it's important to recognize that it's, we have to have boundaries. Correct. Now, when you add in skeptics, yes. we need skeptics. Yeah. We need them. And the reason why we need them is it allows us to have the counter argument. You know, there's a lot of people in the last three decades that I've seen, you know, they talk about coming out gay. Oh my God, people have come out psychic in the most amazing way. And what concerns me is that I don't know if all these people should be doing readings for other people. Mm -hmm. I believe that they have intuition and they have psychic ability and they have a passion or an interest in the subject matter. But what concerns me is when they're gonna sit with somebody else and now give them information and how is that going to affect 
that they person's know. life and choices and karma. Right. They might not realize that. They might say, you know what, you shouldn't drink that water because that water is going to be X, Y, and Z. But what they don't know is that person's dehydrated and they need that water. Mm-hmm. But now that person's going to go, well, she said not to drink that, so I'm not going to drink that. And now that's going to cause a reaction someplace else. I agree. Now that person's responsible for that person's karma and they don't even know it. So I'm very, very aware of what the intentions, the integrity, and the ethics. Mm-hmm. So skeptical mindsets are important. And there's a big difference between being skeptical and cynical. So I think being skeptic is good, healthy, questioning, mm-hmm. question everything and everybody. Just because somebody says they're psychic, don't, don't believe them. Mm-hmm. You have to see evidence, you have to see validation, and you have to know that they're coming from the right place with intention.